So I'm getting my kicks on Miami Beach with my friend Susan, who recently broke up with my brother David, and my friend Matt, who recently broke up with his wife, and my friend Jamie, who hasn't broken up with anybody recently, but probably will. And it makes me wonder, why am I so different from them? Why haven't I ever had a serious relationship that broke up? How come I never had a serious relationship, period? Ow! <laughs> Wake up call, buddy. Some of us are here to play soccer, not just look at the girl. Now you're just jealous I'm not looking at you. Oh, yeah, Thumper. That's my dream in life, to be mentally undressed by you. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think that was actually Jamie's dream in life, to be undressed by Thumper. Thumper's seen me undressed a million times. We've been best friends since kindergarten. We went to high school together and college together, and then we played a little professional tennis for a while. They both had enormous athletic potential. Which, of course, they squandered badly. We still hung out together all the time. People always ask me. How come you two never dated? Because Thumper thinks my boobs are too small. Oh, she, you know, she's been saying that since we were 12. My boobs haven't changed since we were 12. Hey, but seriously, you guys never had any kind of romantic? Mm, no. You like dating my sister. Yeah, it'd be weird. And her boobs are so small. <laughs> Such a jerk. <laughs> oh, you see that? Besides, you just met somebody, Nestor, right? Nestor was the most gorgeous man I'd ever seen. My mother always said, never go out with a man better looking than you are. But did I ever listen to her? No. Really? Is it serious? I don't know yet. It's only been a couple of weeks. Oh, hey, there's Hi. Michelle. You're dating Michelle, the bookkeeper from the club? <laughs> She's not your type at all. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to broaden myself. We're going to go for sushi. You want to join us? <laughs> no. What about you guys? No, thanks. i got to meet my sister and the evil Rick for dinner and... Susan's gonna join me. I am? I'm not going alone. My sister Heather makes pottery and tiles. It's all she ever wanted to do in life. Until I realized I wanted to have children. Then that became all I wanted to do in life. Heather lived with Rick, a building contractor who specialized in high-rise condos. I wanted to have a family, too. I just wanted to make sure that the foundation was solid before we poured the concrete, so to speak. Rick and I have never seen eye to eye. Sometimes they get along perfectly well. Sometimes I think he's the devil's spawn. All I eat now is steak and bacon and liver and tongue. No, it's phenomenal. Oh, yeah, we're both doing it. The pounds, they just fall right off. I have so much energy. That's great. The cholesterol will kill you, but you'll be energetic right to the end. Susan, you look like you've lost some weight, too. Yeah, I don't remember you looking so curvy. Is that why you've been staring at her? I've been staring. Yeah, you have. I've been watching you. OK, OK, come on, too. <laughs> I mean, you know, Rick, he just says whatever pops into his head. <laughs> <laughs> you do look great. Have you been dieting? Well, I, I did just break up with my boyfriend. I know that diet. Yeah, nothing works better. Hey, maybe it's time to try it again, for health reasons. Mm-mm. Ha, ha, ha. So do you want to tell him, or should I? Well, I was going to wait until dessert, no, no, but... No, no. Tell no, me no. what. Yeah. We're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> again? Rick and Heather never actually got married the first time. They were supposed to. Invitations went out, guests flew in, gifts were delivered. The night before the wedding, there was an unfortunate little scheduling mishap. He jilted her. It was a horrible thing to do, but I just wasn't ready to get married then. I still can't believe she ever took him back. Everybody makes mistakes. That's why I love working with Clay. If you're disappointed, you just pound it a few times and start over. She pounded me a few times and we started over. It's been over three years and Matt still hasn't forgiven Rick. So you're gonna congratulate us, sir? <laughs> Congratulations. It was a very awkward meal. I had an awkward meal myself a few days later. So Nestor and I had a big fight. About what? About you. He's very jealous of you. Me? He's the one sleeping with you. Yeah, I know that. But he says that the time that you and I spend together, he says it's not normal. Well, being friends isn't normal? Well, we do talk on the phone a lot. Well, you're a yacker. You talk to a lot of people. And we play a lot of tennis lately. Men and women can't play tennis together? He was very upset when you invited me to that cancer dinner with you last week. Well, I had to bring somebody. You were the only one left in the bullpen. And it was cancer. He thinks I'm in love with you. Well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're not really in love with me, are you? No. <laughs> And you told Nestor this, right? Yes, that's what the fight was about. Well, I hope you two lovebirds work it out. Me too. Nestor and I broke up the next day. Everything with her was thump for this or thump for that. I just couldn't take it anymore. The truth is, I was falling in love with Thumper. 
Who knows, maybe I'd always been in love with Thumper and it just took that fight with Nestor to make me realize it. Thank you, Nestor. I wasn't sure how to tell Thumper how I was feeling, so I decided to avoid him for a few days. I did my best to avoid Rick, too, but no such luck. So you didn't like the outside space? Well, I liked it. I just think we might need something bigger than the outside space. Well, how many people are you planning to invite? Sweetheart, this wedding is a declaration of my love for you. I want to share that with all my friends. OK, but you don't have that many friends. I just think we might need a bigger space. Rick was such a pain in the ass. He wanted the most expensive caterer, the most popular band, the snootiest photographer. I screwed up the first wedding. I just wanted this one to be perfect. And he wanted it all to happen in a matter of weeks so I could still take a cruise to the islands before it got too hot. The honeymoon cruise was Susan's idea. And all afternoon, Rick kept asking about Susan. Are you bringing Susan to the wedding? Can Susan recommend a band? I asked her to get us the best ship, the best deck, the best berth, the best discount. The invitations went out the next day. Hey, listen. I got to go to Rick and Heather's wedding next month. You want to go with me? As what? As what? As my bow tie. What do you mean, as what? I mean, are you inviting me as your date? Yeah, as my date to the wedding. Why don't you take Michelle as your date to the wedding? No, bad idea. Taking a girl to a wedding sends all kinds of signals. What am I, chopped liver? I'm not a girl. I don't get signals. Well, yeah, of course you're a girl, but I mean, it's different with us. You know, we're friends. And you know what? I don't think I want to be friends anymore. What? Why? Because I don't want to be your girl out of the bullpen anymore. I'd rather not see you at all than have to pretend to be happy for you every time you meet someone else. Right. If you don't want to go to the wedding, don't go. This has nothing to do with the wedding. Do you not realize what I'm talking about? No idea. No. I want to be your girlfriend. Well, it was a shock, of course, but not a bad one. I obviously had strong feelings for her, too. He did have one small problem, however. I'm just not attracted to her. Why not? Jamie's prettier than most of the girls we've gone out with. I I'm not attracted to her sexually. Mm -hmm. Hey, what about these for Rick and Heather? Check it out. Napkin rings? You think they registered at Pottery Barn so you could buy them napkin rings? OK, you don't have to snap at me. I don't get it. You obviously like Jamie. You spend more time with her than any of the girls you ever date. I know, I know. And it's not like I never thought about her like that. I mean, in some ways, we'd be perfect together. But? But she just doesn't do it for me. No, I, I mean, the periscope doesn't go up for her. Maybe you don't want it to go up. See, that right there is proof that you don't understand men. I mean, maybe you're afraid Jamie is the perfect girl for you, and then if the sex is good, then you have no excuses not to settle down. OK, maybe you do understand men. I decided to tell Jamie the truth, but I wasn't sure that we'd be sexually compatible. I said, put me in, coach. Let me show you what I can do. I made it clear that it would just be an experiment. We went on our first date the next night. Turned out it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. She was really fun to be with, of course. <laughs> but she was also surprisingly affectionate and thoughtful. And she kissed pretty good. So I started to think this experiment might really work. <sighs> Until the night we finally did it. So I'm lying in bed with one of my oldest friends, and she's just had several orgasms. Men always like to count. They always have to keep score. And she's so blissful, she doesn't realize that I haven't even had one. Welcome to the real world. How is that? Was that all right? I'm going to be totally honest with you. OK. I think we have a lot of potential. So you're not going to send me back to the bullpen? No, I think you could be a starter. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said it didn't work for me. We could have gone back to being friends, but she was looking at me with those big blue eyes, and I just didn't want to disappoint her. I woke up the next morning feeling good about the future. I was feeling good about the future, too, until the day we met Matt and Susan at the hotel to sample food for our reception. Let it go. That is ancient history. You started on your personal stopped. life. You stopped, you stopped calling me the evil rich. I don't like you. Stop calling you the evil rich. You stop treating my sister. Both of you. Hey, hey, hey. 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 hey, would you sit down? Both of you, come on. You heard her. Sit down. What are you going to do if I don't stab me with the butter knife? No, I should make you eat the chicken. That would knock you right out. Stop it. Just stop it. 
All right? One more word no right out of either of you, and we are both leaving. That's right. You would leave me alone with him? That's what you would Shut do. up and sit down. I almost called off the wedding that night. I had never seen Heather so angry. She was throwing pots and smashing tiles. I said, how can you expect me to have children with you when you act like a child yourself? There's nothing worse than a bad fight with someone you love. Oh, yes, there is. Mm. Oh, God. <sighs> was that incredible or what? Uh, oh, that was... <sighs> Pretty damn good. Really? That bad? <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. Don't lie to me, mister. I know you too well. Well, it was not the best sex I've ever had. Well, clearly it wasn't a total failure. Oh, clearly, clearly. I mean, the genie got out of the bottle this time. Oh, so it's an improvement. <laughs> a big one. And you do seem much more comfortable doing it with me. Yeah, and I'm getting there. I would just hate for either one of us to compromise in this area. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't want to compromise either. Good. I think we just need to do it more, you know? Find our rhythm. Yeah, that could be it. I just couldn't explain it to her without seeming cruel. It's hard to be honest with the people you're close to. It's harder to get them to listen. You want couples to sit together, or do you want to split everyone up? Couples, I guess. What did we do at the rehearsal dinner three years ago? No one ever sat down. We're all too busy trying to find Rick. You had to remind me, didn't you? Well, it's not too late to call it off. I mean, you don't have to rush into this. Yes, I do. I have to rush. I'm at that age. I can't just poke around in the dirt forever hoping to find another truffle. So the whole idea of marrying for love? No, no, don't get me wrong. I have very strong feelings about Rick. As do we all. No. Most days I adore him. And even on the days I don't, I'm still very attracted to him. Sex cures a lot. You'd be surprised. I'm not surprised. I was married once, as you recall. Yes, I do recall. I can tell you the whole family's glad to see you bouncing back. We think you and Susan make a lovely couple. <laughs> Me and Susan. We were together a lot. You could see how people could leap to that conclusion. I explained to Heather that nothing was going on between Susan and me. It would have been weird. I had just broken up with David, one of Matt's closest friends. I did find her very attractive, though. I did find him very attractive, though. Oh, hi. Hi. Just the person I wanted to see. Well, I just came by to drop off your cruise tickets, oh, actually. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fantastic. Did you get us the upgrades? Uh, yeah, you're all set. You're sailing the ship now. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Listen, yeah. before Heather gets back, which lingerie do you think she'd prefer tomorrow night? The lace or the silk? What would you prefer? Oh, I'd prefer the silk. Okay. And one other thing, do these look like they're the right size or...? Yeah. Because I'm not going to have time to exchange them. No, that's the right size. Would it be weird for me to ask you to try one on for me? <laughs> Would it be weird? Can you believe they waited until the last minute to clean it? They've had three years. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hi, honey. Hi. Huh. Huh. What are you doing here? Uh, we were discussing uh, wedding gift ideas. Oh, oh, don't get us anything. I mean, that way I won't have to return it in humiliation when the evil Rick runs off again. Oh, that's not gonna happen, mm, We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love that skirt. What is that, silk? Yeah. <laughs> that was horrible upstairs. Did Rick really expect me to try on Heather's lingerie? What a disaster. Susan probably thinks I was coming on to her. Try on the lingerie. How stupid was that? I am the evil Rick. Why were lace panties sticking out of Rick's pocket? Was he making some weird kind of pass at Susan? Maybe Matt was right. Maybe Rick does have a thing for me. I can't even look at him anymore. Susan can't even look at me. And if I tell her I'm not attracted to her, I'll just make it worse. Oh, God, Matt's gonna have me killed. I can't believe Susan wears lace panties. She seems more like a good old-fashioned cotton girl. Damn, I, I gotta stop thinking about her like this. Hello? Jamie? In here. How'd the show go? That was all right. I went live from the arena, and I got a few minutes with Riley. You know, he... Hi. Hi. <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah, you like it. You all right? Yeah. Great. Why? Just thought we were going to get something to eat. Didn't expect to find you in bed. So you don't want to fool around now? We can't. Not if we're going to go to dinner and be back in time for baseball tonight. 
Yeah. It finally occurred to me that maybe Thumper would never fancy me the way I fancied him. We did end up having sex that night, but I don't think either one of us was truly satisfied. He just lay there like a cold fish. For the first time in my life, I made love to a woman and tried not to think about baseball. It was a long, sad night. Not as long as that rehearsal dinner. Hotel. Don't you remember the party after dinner? Vaguely, I was exhausted. Yeah, we crashed, so Heather made us stay here. Guys, come on. We didn't, uh, you know. No, no, don't worry. You'll remember when that happens. When that happens? Wake up! All right, all right, I'm coming. Hurry up, come on. Hi, have you seen Heather this morning? No, I just woke up. Why? Because I can't find her. I think she might have run out. To get what? No, I mean run out. Run out for good. Jilted me on our wedding day. Ask my girl. Oh, what do you know? The evil Heather. Rick? Heather, Rick? don't do this to me. It's so unfair. Rick. Just call me back. She's not answering her phone. Did you see her on the beach? No, no one's seen her. Oh, God. I don't believe it. This is really awful. She's gone. She's not gone. Yes, she is. She is. I'm telling you, I know her. She's been telling me she was going to do this to me for years, but I thought she was just joking, but now she's gone. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Rick. Rick. <laughs> Come on, Rick, don't cry. I'm sorry, Matt, but I really love her. And I know that you don't believe me, and I know that you don't trust me, and I know that you don't even like me, but I don't think I can live without her. <laughs> it's OK, all right? Come on. It's all right. No more tears, all right? Come on, do you have uh, any idea where she might be? No, no idea. Do you? I might. What's the word to you? Ow! I just... I was... I was joking. The summer after ninth grade, Matt discovered this abandoned villa at the end of our street with the most beautiful little tiled grotto. Hasn't changed much at all. Oh, hi. Heather used to spend hours there every day, drawing, painting, getting felt up by my best friend. I just woke up this morning and panicked, knowing I was about to marry a man that my little brother thinks is evil. Yeah. who cares what anyone else thinks? If you love him, Marry him. Just don't make us sit next to him at Thanksgiving every year. Is that what you really think, that I should marry him? I don't know anymore. You tell me, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> whatever I say? Yeah. OK. I think you should. What? Marry him. Because? Because I don't think he's evil anymore. I did, but now I think he genuinely loves you very, very much. In fact, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure of it. Well, what makes you so sure? Because I've done everything I could to discourage that little bastard. Nothing's worked. <laughs> if that's not love, I don't know what is. <laughs> it was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. I wept through the whole thing. Who dreamed you'd be such a weeper? Everyone? Um, wait, guys. Um, I want to make a brief but corny toast to Heather, my princess bride. I used to think that I was your knight in shining armor. But um, this morning, I realized that when it comes to you, I have no armor. My heart is defenseless. I love you completely. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing, one more thing. Um, we wouldn't be here tonight. I mean, at least I know that Heather might not be here tonight if it weren't for her brother, Matt. So, Matt, thank you for everything. I guess I'm your brother. Now, too, and, uh, and I, I want to wish you and Susan all the love and happiness that Heather and I share tonight.
<laughs> that was such an awful moment. Rick knew there was nothing going on between Susan and me. That toast was pure evil. Rick's toast was so sweet. I hope my husband gives me a toast like that at my wedding. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was... Don't worry, I know it won't be you. It's not a very romantic thing to say. Well, it's more romantic than anything you've said to me over the past month. Whoa, that's a blindside hit. Oh, come on. We both know this isn't working, you and me. It's not? No. I mean, it's obvious that I care more about you than you do about me. That's not true. Shut up. It's not... No, shut up. You never did, and you probably never will. And that's the truth. And if I want us to stay friends, which I do, I'm just going to have to learn to live with that and hope that my desire to rip your clothes off every time I see you just goes away over time. And if it doesn't? Well, then you'll just have to service me every once in a while and keep my hormones at bay. Okay. okay. <laughs> we danced all night till they threw us out. Jamie was still the best closer in the league. The next day, Rick and Heather left on a honeymoon cruise to the islands. Heather was pregnant by the time they got back. Susan and Matt continued to hang out together all the time, but they were careful never to drink when they were alone. Jamie and I remained close friends. And to my great relief, she eventually got back together with Nestor, who found her incredibly sexy. Me? <laughs> I'm just happy to be alone for a while. Alone isn't always lonely. I went out running on the beach by myself yesterday, and it was peaceful and quiet. Nothing but the sound of my own footsteps and the screech of the guns. That's all I heard. Hey, don't move! Everybody Loves Raymond is next. CBS Wednesday on an all-new City of Angels. One, two, three. Woo. Prepare for the unexpected. You're about to have a baby. No. The outrageous. My dog's been shot. Please help me. And the miraculous. I'm not a courageous man. Talk to your family. That's your power. An unforgettable all-new City of Angels, CBS Wednesday.